Given Lonzo's back and another top perimeter defender in Alex Caruso could return within a week or so, this video shows you every reason for why the Chicago Bulls have become even more powerful. The number one seed out east will be without their most versatile forward minus Patty Williams in Javante Green for the next two to four weeks, but as you'll find out, the potentially generationally great depth on the wing for this squad more than makes up for the absence of Patty, Javante, and Caruso for the time being. Stay tuned to see what this Bulls team has relied on the very most amidst their current beastly nine-game winning streak. Before continuing, only 11% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Bulls fans are still waiting on the return of a pesky perimeter stopper in Alex Caruso, but Lonzo Ball's return gives Chicago back debatably its most valuable defender. Ball currently ranks seventh directly ahead of Milwaukee's Drew Holiday in defensive rating among point guards so far in 2021-22. Lonzo's activity in the passing lanes, his lateral quickness, and high IQ were severely missed while he was on health and safety. In the five games he missed from December 26th to January 1st, Chicago's team defense dipped to number 19 over that stretch. Conversely, with Ball in the lineup for 29 games before entering protocols, Chicago ranked 10 spots higher at number nine in team defense. And since returning, Lonzo's displayed exactly why he's built up a reputation for being an elite defensive talent. Man's already posted five steals in the two games since he's been activated. It's a scary thought for other top contenders when you realize the Bulls' stacked roster not only just got one of their top defensive players back, but they're expecting a few more elite stoppers back within the next two months. Caruso was out with an ankle injury before entering protocols, and Javante Green just strained his groin, he's going to miss the next two to four weeks. But once Ball, Caruso, and Javante are all gracing the floor together, that significantly increases the Bulls' two-way identity. But against the Washington Wizards on Friday night, it was far from a slow, defensive, grinded-out type of game. Chicago was absolutely on fire throughout the entire night. Seven players for them tallied at least eight points, fueled by 27 from Zach Levine. Chicago shot 52.7% from the fields and 45.5% from three, swiftly rotating the rock from side to side, turning decent looks into high quality ones. Generating 34 assists on 48 made buckets, it turned out to be one of those nights where the opponent's mission to shut down DeRozan eased the pressure off DeMar's perfectly suited, extremely talented supporting cast. Continuing to be the biggest fan favorite in many years on Madison Street, Ayo Dosumu had one of his best games as a pro, scoring 18 points on 7 of 9 shooting while playing solid defense on Bradley Beal. It's starting to become really hard to believe that this kid is a rookie. While Washington's All-Star did have an incredibly efficient 9 for 14 shooting night and he made 2 of 4 attempts from 3, Beal was forced into committing 5 costly turnovers. Also, like he's done to Trey Young and so many other attackers, the product of Illinois and Io made it much more difficult for Beal to get to his hotspots. Beal's attempting 20 shots on average so far in January, so Dosumu holding him to just 14 attempts is a win in itself, regardless of Beal shooting 64.3% from the field on the night. In this outing against the now number nine seeded Wizards, the number seven pick from 2019's draft in Kobe White, had another massive game with 21 points off the bench, including going four for four from three. Taking into account the first of two games Chicago played against Atlanta, and White is now averaging 18.7 points and 4.3 assists, while shooting 56.5% overall and 45% from three-point range over the last six games. Kobe had his role increase with Lonzo out until the Magic game and Alex Caruso out this entire time, and the Bulls have needed every bit of this version of him to keep this nine-game winning streak alive. He was especially crucial in the DeMar DeRozan buzzer beater games, as well as the ugly Magic win. Meanwhile, Friday night was merely another trip to the office for Nikola Vucevic, who racked up a double-double of 16 points and 14 rebounds. Vooch also added seven dimes and had active hands on the other end, grabbing four steals. Lonzo Ball took all of his 11 shots from three, making six of them. He also had six dimes and five boards. Surprisingly, a player who I was very impressed with in this one was third string big man, Tony Bradley. In just 11 minutes played, Tony set some excellent screens for White, DeRozan, and Levine, 
while also tallying 8 points, 4 rebounds, and a pair of big time blocks. But with Javante Green and Jordan Bell both out, look for the old school center in Tony Bradley to get more opportunities in Billy Donovan's rotation. The opening frame saw both teams score over 30 in the quarter, and on the Bulls' side, they weren't playing up to their usual standard defensively whatsoever. Good news was they were keeping pace with the Wizards by knocking down shots on the other side. As I mentioned, Chi-Town's still missing two of their top defensive guys, and the absence of Alex Caruso and Javante Green was massively on display throughout the game, and it started early and often. Washington was able to get into the lane fairly easily and attack Chicago's pick-and-roll defense with ease. The teams traded taking the lead as we kept seeing made basket after made basket on each end. Chicago was able to build up a small lead thanks to a late-quarter spurt, led by a three-point play from Kobe White, and then Troy Brown Jr. splashed a three soon after. It was a five-point lead, despite the Bulls not playing even close to their best basketball. The second period was another offensive flurry. Chicago scored 36, but the problem was the Wizards had 34 of their own. The Bulls opened on a 7-0 run to extend the lead to double digits and looked to have control of the game, but the Wizards just kept battling back as Spencer Dinwiddie took the reins of the offense. He scored 14 points in the second quarter alone to keep the deficit from getting too out of hand. Dinwiddie drops home a smooth floater to make it a four-point game with under a minute to go. Putting some pressure on Chicago, the Bulls did end the half on a good note as White splashed a three in the dying seconds to make it a seven-point lead. But the Bulls came out of the locker room very sluggish to start the third. Washington went on a 9-2 run as Chicago's offense went ice cold, and suddenly the lead had vanished. Daniel Gafford scored in the lane with 6-14 left to give the Wizards an 83-82 lead. Suddenly, things were getting a bit tense at the United Center, but this is also when the Bulls' offense really started to pick up and everything started to get going. The big baller Lonzo Ball drained two three-pointers on back-to-back -back possessions before Levine went into takeover mode. Levine scored the next seven points for the Bulls to help build the lead back up to eight points. Then it was Kobe White's turn to go on a scoring frenzy. He scored six of Chicago's final eight points in the quarter, including a floater which beat the buzzer. Suddenly, in the blink of an eye, thanks to their offense, the Bulls had turned a tight contest into a double-digit lead. After what went down to start the previous frame, Chi-Town made sure to not repeat the same mistake. Conversely, they kept chugging, putting their foot on the gas pedal and extending the lead. The Bulls went on a dominant 11-2 run at around the 9-minute mark and blew the whole game wide open. The stretch big Nikola Vucevic hit a jumper with 6.49 to go and made it a 20-point advantage for the home team. Each time the Wizards made a basket, Chicago responded with one of their own. After Ayo Dosumu stole a pass at half court and dunked it home, Washington called timeout, subsequently subbing out their starters in the process. The Bulls responded with the same a minute later. We saw minutes from Marco Simonovic and Alonzo McKinney near the end as well. DeMar DeRozan struggled a bit in this one. He only had 15 points and went 5 of 16 from the field. However, as he showed, even when he's not scoring, he's still making an offensive impact as he had 8 assists. Derrick Jones Jr. only played 16 minutes with just 2 points and 3 rebounds. DJJ was struggling with foul trouble in this one. The bench as a whole gave Chicago a real boost though. It wasn't all just White and Dosumu. The unit as a whole went 20 of 25 from the field to combine for 52 points. Tony Bradley, who made his return to the rotation, was available for dump off passes down the baseline and took advantage. TBJ continued to impress in the minutes he was given with five points, along with solid defense and massive energy. As for Washington, they had all of their starters score in double figures with Beal scoring 26, Kyle Kuzma had 21 points, while Gafford scored 14 and grabbed eight rebounds. Gotta give credit to the Wizards for putting up a fight, but this was a solid win for the Bulls. They seamlessly rebounded from shaky moments and once again displayed their brilliant offensive firepower. They were able to get amazing minutes in scoring from their bench, along with most of their starters, displaying the ability to once again break games open at will with their opportunistic defense, leading to easy buckets and offensive runs on the other side. It's going to be very interesting to see how long the Bulls can keep this winning streak going. They've got a tough one in Dallas against a Mavs team that's been playing really well recently. But speaking of recently, who as of late has impressed you the most about the Bulls? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. I just received this Curry Flow 6 shoe. 
which I'll be shipping to one of my Speaks winners, Boston Haltane. Two more awards are on the way from last December's giveaway. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says, I think Caleb Martin is the most important role player for the Heat. He's so underrated that others can't see how huge his impact is for this team. He's a good perimeter defender, a scrapper who gives it all on the defensive side of the court. Thanks for that amazing take. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.